All right, hey everyone. So we ordered food from a place called Boloco today, and it's a really great place because their burritos are really good. And they gave us a promise, a promise that your burritos will be delivered by 12.30 p.m. And we have some code internally to deal with this if that promise does not get um, actually resolved. So if food comes, we have lunch, but if not, I have to give the lecture that is supposed to happen after lunch. So it's a little snowy out there, so I guess the promise got rejected. And for that reason, lunch is going to be at one today. And speaking of promises, um, yesterday we got a little bit of a look into how promises work, and we used it earlier today to fetch information from an API. But now we're today we're going to speak more on how asynchronous JavaScript actually works and the motivation behind why we use it. Uh, so before we get told, get continue on, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about, or just uh, talk about the terminology that we use for this. So uh, typically in JavaScript and, and your other um, Python classes, we program like synchronously. So lines happen one up after the other and things happen consecutively. Uh, and now what promises did was that it allowed us to uh, run code asynchronously, which means multiple processes can run at the same time. Um, so let's do a quick recap of what we learned about promises yesterday. Um, yesterday, we had this example of the web web restaurant where we promised to make steak for you and it can either fulfill or reject. And let's recall the notation that we used in JavaScript to deal with this. Uh, when promises are fulfilled, we see that um, we can handle that with a then keyword. So uh, with this get um, promise, we can use dot then and then pass it a callback function, which would run with the, with the return result of the get when that promise gets fulfilled. But we also saw that sometimes uh, these promises get rejected. For example, if the API call fails, then you would use the dot hash keyword um, chained afterwards. And this takes a callback function that takes the error and then it runs it if the, when the promise gets rejected. Yeah. Yeah. So let's think of an example of the Gordon Ramsay kitchen. So Gordon Ramsay is using our web lab restaurant and synchronous Gordon Ramsay would watch us cook because he wants to observe us. Um, so Nick, can you start cooking? So as Gordon Ramsay, I would just spend all my time watching Nick. Um, but, you know, maybe I could be doing better things with my life. Like, you know, whatever happens, like Nick's probably, Nick doesn't have to know how to cook. So, you know, whatever ends up happening, it's gonna happen regardless of whether or not I watch him. So if I was asynchronous for Dan Ramsey, then Nick could just be like, yeah, I promise that we will go safe for you. Um, and then I'll be like, okay, I can go somewhere else. Like, he's my phone. And this is really the essence of asynchronous programming um, in JavaScript. This prevents the rest of our, or this allows us to do other things while some other process that takes time happens. Yes, so this was also an example that we used yesterday. Uh, we have the my one second promise, which resolves after one second. And if this was to be synchronous, then our code would just stop for like a whole second. But um, here in this example, we have the promise and we're doing that then and that catch. And then afterwards, we're doing some console logging. And if you recall from yesterday, this promise um, does not stop the rest of our code from running. So it does the calculations for, apparently I always type it wrong with code, but it's a cross-sectional area of the earth, um, not circumference. But it prints that stuff before the console log that is within the promise um, runs or prints. And that's because the promise 
did not hold up the rest of the code as well because it is asynchronous. And you guys used this earlier today in the workshop and also yesterday to uh, make calls to APIs such as to Padbook. Um, and this allows our code to make these fetches, which may, might take like up to a second to get back to us. And you don't want that, you don't want your whole website to completely freeze in that one second. So that's why um, this API call was asynchronous. Uh, so now let's move on to um, things that we haven't seen before with uh, asynchronous processes. So sometimes we might want to do things one after the other, asynchronous processes one after the other. So for example, like um, with the web lab restaurant, you know, maybe we can spend some time cooking the food, but then something else has to happen. Like the Uber driver has to pick up your food and then bring it to your door. So what we can do with promises is that we can chain them. So the first promise here, get promise, um, returns a promise, and then you can append dot then afterwards, which would handle uh, when the promise eventually gets fulfilled. Um, and when I got to fulfill, it can do something, but we can move on to the next thing. So the value returned by the first dot then, which is um, gonna be a promise and can return something, we can take and do something else with it. And you can do this on and on. Um, and in your code, this could be, for example, like getting data from one API and then putting it into another API and then forming some kind of pipeline. And finally, we can still use dot hatch in the end to handle errors. So we've seen what you can do with one promise. Um, let's see what you can do with multiple promises. Because sometimes in your code, you might be making calls to many APIs or doing many things that need to happen uh, asynchronously. So in this example, we have five promises, each of them doing get to um, query some information from the server about, um, the, com about the comments. So uh, I've also constructed a array here called promises that has all five of these promises. And now this allows us to do a bunch of things uh, with functions like promise.call. So for example, here with promise.call, uh, it takes a one parameter, which is an array of promises, and then it resolves when all of the input promises have been either fulfilled or rejected. Uh, and then that takes a callback function called all results. Um, oh, sorry, it takes a callback function which has an input parameter of all results. Uh, and all results uh, will be an array of all the results of each promise. And then you can do things with that array. Um, we also have promise.race, which kind of like um, is what it sounds like which is a race between all the promises to either fulfill or reject. And this one will take a, uh, in that then we'll take a callback function that um, is called with the argument, or is called with the first promise that gets fulfilled or rejected. We also have promise on any, which will do something with the first result that fulfills. And the difference between this one and race is that race, uh, will call the callback function pass to dot then, um, regardless of whether the first result fulfilled or rejected. Whereas with any, um, this is with the promise in the array that is first to fulfill. Um, so this is stuff for handling. If you have many promises, um, you might not have to deal with this in your projects. We won't have this in our workshops, but um, you might run into a case where you need this and you can always come back to the slides or look this up um, because I did go through this quite quickly. So now let's move on to something else, another problem that we might have that we have to deal with asynchronously. So here I've defined two variables, A and B, and both of them are uh, defined with a function called slow number which returns a promise that 
fulfills after one second. So slow number nine is a promise uh, that would fulfill with value nine, uh, return value nine after one second. So what would happen if we wanted to catalog something like A plus B? Now this doesn't work because, I mean, the whole point of promises is not to like stop the rest of your code flow. So this console log A plus P won't um, wait for like a whole second before it prints something. It's just going to print what was given to it. But the problem is that JavaScript doesn't know what A and B is yet because it takes one second to fulfill. So when I try to print this, all it sees is two pending promises. So how could we deal with this? So based on the things that we know about promises with dot then notation and also dot catch, we could do something like this. Uh, here we have the a promise and we can do dot then and you can pass it a callback function that takes the value when it is fulfilled. And then that you can pass in another callback function or another dot then, which also takes another callback function that uh, has the value of b when it is fulfilled. And then you can finally constant log it. But this is like a little convoluted. So um, there is actually a new way of doing this um, that we will talk about next. Because often you might have to, you might see things where um, promises are nested one in, within another, and it's a little gnarly looking. So this brings us to async await. Um, but before we get into what that is, uh, let's talk about the idea of an asynchronous function. So asynchronous functions are functions that return control back to the caller before computation is done. So this was what was happening with promises. It returns control to the rest of your code while we're waiting on the promise to fulfill or reject. Um, so with this diagram here, um, you see the red part is the computation that might take some time. Uh, if you do this synchronously, you're going to have to go through the entire step before returning to your code, uh, the rest of your code. Whereas asynchronously, uh, it will get both get the computation going and then return to the rest of your code. So let's look at the example earlier. Um, JavaScript introduced a new keyword called await, which would wait for uh, your promise to fulfill and then fulfill or reject and then put that value in as the, uh, uh, put that result, return value in, in place of what was there before. However, if you just type this directly into VS code, it won't work because a await is something that has to work with something else called an async function. And only async functions can use await, this await keyword. So if you look at this my function, um, the way it is defined, you might see that it is pretty similar to the other functions that you've learned about in JavaScript and have been using in this class. But the only difference is that we have the keyword async uh, before the parentheses. And this allows us to use await um, within the function. So now if we put this into VS code, it's actually going to work. Um, so this my function is declared here to be asynchronous. It will, if you call it, it will return to the rest of your code without interrupting the flow. Um, so we have to call my function afterwards and we'll do the console login after one second successfully. So let's compare it to what we were doing before with promises. Um, both of these actually, both of these examples on top left and bottom right do exactly the same thing. One was just written using the async await notation and one was using written using the original dot then notation, yes. Uh, so yes, that is true. Um, a dot b dot then won't be called until a has returned. But the thing with uh, a and b is that they are both running in the background. So a is going to uh, resolve after one second, and by the time it calls b, b will have also resolved. So 
both of these take one second to uh, run. Um, well, B was defined as a promise earlier. That takes one second. So the counter for one second has already started ticking. And we see that these are like, like one is a little more confusing than the other, but you know, it's not that much better, but let's look at an example where there's four promises that we have to add up. Then things really start getting gnarly when uh, you want to console log all of them added together with the original or with the traditional promises notation. Whereas with async, you can just add await C and await D. So I've told you guys a, or I've uh, talked about a new notation for writing things that you can do with promises. Uh, something to note is that async await is actually just a notational change. Everything that you do with promises can be done with async await, and anything that you do with async await can be done with promises. Uh, in fact, promises have been around in JavaScript since forever, but async await is like pretty recent. It came out in 2017 and has only become more common than the dot then promises notation in the past couple of years. And most of the code that you will write in web lab workshops will still use the dot then notation because uh, it is often, it is sometimes easier to write. But of course, in your projects, you are free to use either notation and you can refer back to these slides or uh, look up documentation on async await. So for example, in our workshops uh, earlier today, we were using this get um, function to get, to make a call to our API. And then we handled it with dot then. Um, you can actually rewrite this using async await um, on the right. So uh, you would have to define an asynchronous function called get stories. And in it, you await the response of API stories and then you can use the return variable story objects in the set stories uh, setter. But since this is an asynchronous function defined inside the callback function given to these effects, you're going to have to get stories again, which is a little convoluted and might be hard to understand now. So that's why we use the traditional promises notation. But in some cases, it might be that might be easier to understand your code if you use the async await notation. Uh, so I'm going to pause for a second for questions because you know, this async await notation is kind of novel and might be hard to understand in this particular use effect example. All right, so uh, in the final part of this lecture, I'm gonna give more motivation for why we use async. I mean, I've kind of been like talking about, um, you know, not having the rest of your code wait for some small process to happen, but that's like a little bit of a like arbitrary or nebulous concept. Let's see like how this is used in practice. So we have the JavaScript event loop, which is what, uh, which is how Google Chrome and like Node and all these other uh, JavaScript engines run JavaScript. And it, it like handles everything that happens with JavaScript, including button presses, inputs, and whatnot. But the thing with synchronous functions is that every time it goes line by line, uh, it stops and then waits for that computation, computation to finish happening before the rest of it happens. Now, you are making an API call that takes like a whole second and would completely stop the rest of the things on your website from working. Or if you were, uh, for example, you know, making a call to OpenAI API that we were using, that would be a whole six seconds, which you might not care about, but your users will be really confused when their website freezes for six seconds. And that's why we have async functions, which allow you to break out of this cycle and have multiple processes happening at the same time. Another thing that we learned about in 
uh, React part two was that the set state function in React is actually implemented uh, partially with asynchronous functions under the hood. That way, uh, when it is doing the rendering for what the next um, thing to show to the user is, it doesn't hold up um, the rest of your site. And while this might be like a really small amount of time, like 100 milliseconds, it is still really important for making sure that the rest of your site is responsive. Uh, another really important place that uh, asynchronous computation is used. Um, of course, we've seen a lot of this like uh, interaction between the client server uh, making requests, and that's why, uh, and we don't want to stop the client from not working. This is also the case with communication between the server and database. So tomorrow, uh, you're going to learn more about communication between server and database, but the same thing happens, you know, when you query some information from a database, it takes some time to look it up and return it to the server. So um, we also use, we're also going to use asynchronous functions or promises on the server side for querying databases. And that's because for all these things, uh, the common factor is that we can't guarantee how long the communication will take. So we can't hold up the rest of the processes on the client, the server, or a database. So in total, like um, asynchronous processing is actually everywhere. So for example, fetching data, or even when your computer is downloading or uploading a file, you don't want the rest of your like uh, web interaction to not work. Or if you're running a big computation, you still want to do other stuff on your computer. Uh, so and other things like playing music or video, you still want to be able to like click around on your computer. So asynchronous processing is actually everywhere and is um, not just in JavaScript, but also in the rest of the things that your computer uses. So finally, to recap uh, the things that we learned about today, we have the await keyword introduced in JavaScript in 2017 that waits for promises to resolve. Uh, and every time you use the await keyword, you must have it inside an asynchronous function that you define with the async keyword before your parentheses um, in your arrow function. Um, and anything that you do with promises can be rewritten with async await notation, and you can just use whatever is best for a job or whatever is best for a readability of your code. Though in our workshops, we will usually have you use the dot then notation. And finally, we talked about the motivation for why we need async, uh, asynchronous processing. And it's because it is everywhere from client server communication to the database server communication and from the React front end render loop and background tasks on your computer. Uh, so I am told that lunch has been delivered now. So uh, hope we learned some things about promises and basically be back by 1.30. <laughs>